Hello everybody, this is Craig Villeen, your independent business advisor for Glazer Kennedy Insider Circle and uh, marketing performance strategist. Uh, today's topic is the most powerful tool I know to keep an iron fence around your herd. And if you're not familiar with that term herd, your herd is your list of current, past, and future customers. All right, so uh, today we're going to talk about the most powerful tool I know to keep an iron fence around them, to keep them uh, with you, interested in you, and buying from you. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Craig Villeen, and uh, I'm the loving father of Mini-Me. That's him right now, uh, right there. Uh, he's currently 11 and a half years old and uh, is entering junior high school. Can't believe it. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 11 years old when my sister was getting a $5 allowance and I was getting a 50 cent allowance. Uh, best lesson my dad ever taught me was go earn it yourself if you want to make more. So over the course of a summer and a winter, you know, I made about a hundred times what my sister was making. Uh, mowing lawns, uh, three different paper routes, shoveling driveways back in Boston, uh, hanging Christmas lights, uh, any jobs that I could get. Uh, to earn money I took and then when I got too busy I had my friends doing some of the work and I took a piece of the pie not bad huh <laughs> uh, I'm right now currently a marketing performance strategist I help companies enhance the performance of their current marketing help them get a uh, far greater result for the same time money and effort they're already spending uh, thus creating uh, a greater income greater revenues for your company uh, I'm an info marketer private coach uh, as well. Uh, Dan Kennedy is my mentor, one of my mentors, and I found his book, The Ultimate Marketing Plan, in a Bucket Bookstore uh, in Boston in 1993. And, um, Basically, I was walking through town, had a buck in my pocket, had a Boston Tea Pass, that is a, a transit pass in my pocket, and uh, found this bookstore called Buck a Book. It was brand new, and walked in the door, and in a barrel right by the right side of the door, once I walked in, was uh, it was filled with first edition Ultimate Marketing Plan books, um, and uh, basically sat in the store for two hours reading the book uh, till the saleswoman said, hey, mister, you going to buy the book or what? <laughs> So I had a dollar in my pocket and uh, went up to the counter. It was a dollar five, five cents tax, and uh, fortunately there was a penny jar there, so I was able to take five pennies out and use it. But one thing critically uh, important to the success of me in my life was this one concept uh, called the Robert Collier Principle by most marketers, and that is tie your marketing message uh, into the current thing that your prospects are thinking about. So what are they thinking about most? What's on their minds right now that you can tie your marketing message into? Well, at the time, there was a bunch of muggings going on in Boston, and uh, it, right on Boston Common. People walking from one end of the commons to the other to get to the train station were in jeopardy of being mugged. And so that was something big that was on the news uh, consistently. At that time, I was a third-degree black belt, and I trained, uh, I taught Taekwondo at a friend's school locally. And I said, to him, how can we take what we know to companies to make people feel safer? So we created a program called Common Sense Self-Defense, went into companies uh, either at lunch or at, uh, after hours and taught basic fundamental self-defense uh, strategies, tactics um, to make people feel safe. Well, it's a short story, um, you know, I wasn't broke anymore and uh, most of the people that we taught wanted to come and take lessons at our school so it was really really a cool result and it was just by reading that one thing in that book so if you don't own Dan Kennedy's books or you don't know who he is at least go to Amazon.com and order the ultimate marketing plan uh, I believe it's fourth edition right now uh, I've been operating the local chapter of GKIC, that's Glazer Kennedy Insider Circle, uh, since November 2007 um, in Pasadena. It's the only chapter like it in the Los Angeles area, and we basically teach the principles that I've learned over time from Dan Kennedy and Bill Glazer, two mentors of mine. Uh, and it's all about direct marketing, direct, direct response marketing, and uh, a type of marketing that uh, goes against most traditional styles of marketing, but it produces results. And uh, if you're ever interested, uh, you can go to www.laareagkic.com and learn more about us and uh, come to your first meeting for free and check it out. Uh, I'm also the author of The Ultimate No BS Guide to Entrepreneurial Success, uh, which is available on Amazon.com. 
All right, let's get right to it. So before we get to the tool uh, that uh, you know builds an iron fence around your herd, we still have to build the herd. So it all begins with the list. The list is the most valuable asset in a business. Okay, um, and I would also go to say that that yes, it is the most valuable asset, but the relationship with the list is also very valuable. Um, so if you have start, you're starting out in a new business, or if you're saying um, uh, I had my own business for a while and I've been stuck, well, you've got to nurture the list. You've got to reestablish it. It's like being away from your friends for a while and going back and say, Hey guys, I know I've been away for a while, but I'd love to reconnect with you. You know, start talking to them again and start nurturing the relationship. Andrew Carnegie, steel magnet, uh, the one who got Napoleon Hill to basically go out and research the most wealthiest and successful people in the world and uh, ended up with books, Think and Grow Rich, The Laws of Success, and so on. Andrew Carnegie said, if you take away all my possessions, my wealth, my home, my cars, everything, but leave my list of customers, I shall have everything back in short order. What he's saying is, is that you can strip him of anything and everything, but just leave him with his list of customers, and he'll have everything back in a short period of time. That's pretty awesome, huh? So, equipment, location, employees. If you were to sell your business, well, the value isn't in the equipment, the location, employees necessarily. It's in the list. The list is the value in the business that people are doing. So, you know, when, uh, let's say, B of A buys out, um, let's say, uh, Wells Fargo, which they haven't, but if they were to buy it, yeah, they might get the locations and the equipment, but the value is in the customers that Wells Fargo has. That's how B of A is going to make their money. So if you want to ever consider selling your business down the line or taking on partners or investors, guess what's important? The list. So it all starts with the trap. Okay, how do we build the list? Well, this trap, it's the place where our prospect's name, address, email address, phone, fax numbers are captured. And what's critically important is permission to use it once we gather that information. Okay, So you want to attract only qualified prospects. Okay, you, you, What this allows you to do is design smaller, simpler lead generation ads uh, to keep your front end costs low and invest most of your resources in interested prospects. So oh, this, this ad that's sitting right to the right is an old Gary Halbert ad. Um, I would go and say that you know you would want that headline to speak only to the people that you want to uh, to opt into your list. Okay, so you want people that. So if you're in, you're a hypnotherapist, okay, and you say um, attention smokers who've been smoking longer than six years. Okay, that speaks very specifically to you know to a certain type of smoker okay if you're if uh, I'm dealing with marketers okay or entrepreneurs that I want to help with my small business I'm gonna say attention uh, business owners in the Pasadena area who already spend money to advertise okay so I'm only speaking to not the Joe business owner small business owner who starts in the chamber who doesn't have enough money I'm targeting people who already pay to advertise because that's a different type of customer than the person who has no idea how to spend to acquire a customer. Does that make sense? Okay. So where's the trap? Well, you, online it's going to be like in an opt-in box you might see here and it might have something compelling. Okay, An irresistible reason to exchange their information in return for something valuable to them. Okay, Here it says get your free report uh, create your first website by this afternoon. So there's a time element and it says it's that easy that you'll be able to do it in that amount of time. So that's that's good. Okay, uh, Your office, if you have people coming into your office, if you're in insurance, uh, if you're in uh, legal, CPA, etc., etc., you're going to build, you're going to develop that information you know, as you build your client profile pre-appointment questionnaire tell me all about you so I know a little bit about you before I come out to visit you so an insurance salesman might do that a salesperson might do that okay and they're gonna fill out a basically a prospect questionnaire or a future customer questionnaire customer data form same kind of thing uh, learning as much as you can about your customer before uh, you do business with them and during and after Okay, uh, and a sales agreement. If you're gonna, you know, you create a sales agreement, you go and write up a sale. If you, if you um, 
either do business across the table or if you do it over the phone or whatever uh, you're going to have that personal information there which can later be used to communicate on a regular basis with your customers so competitive intelligence the best way to figure out how to do this is to become a prospect with your competitors or with other types of companies to see how they get your personal information okay and also you want to see how they use it do they email you on a regular basis do they send a newsletter in the mail uh, do they send offers in the mail that sort of thing see how other people are doing it and model it okay especially if it's successful and it gets captures your attention if uh, you don't want to be ticked off by it then do it with companies that you want to do business with ultimately and you'll see how they do it okay so now that we know that we have to build a list right okay now let's talk about the tool best to keep an iron fence around it okay so why newsletters are the best overall media or tool there is to keep an iron fence around your herd okay so it's a forum to change people from customers to belonging to a community okay because newsletters are perceived as a publication not advertising you could be promoting yourself uh, in a very kind of uh, a hidden way if you will but it's perceived as a publication and not as an advertisement uh, it builds trust with your reader because you know you writing you can write personally in it and with the other elements that will show you that go into a great newsletter uh, you'll see how it builds trust it builds relationship okay again some of the elements of a good newsletter build upon that relationship to show that you really care and that you really care about customers in general um, you can create credibility and celebrity within there okay newsletters are perceived as a publication making you an expert in your industry um, it's a forum for demonstration so you can highlight customers successes congratulations to so-and-so who accomplished this after we instructed her to do so um, you can show referrals so uh, thank you and welcome to these new referrals uh, thank you to people who have referred uh, you want to make it a big deal when people refer because people who refer refer so and if you don't acknowledge them then they know it and they will probably not continue to refer uh, it increases customer purchases okay so for many reasons number one uh, reminding them what you have available uh, within your newsletter um, that can increase purchases because they're like oh I like that I'm gonna go buy it but it also um, the, the newsletter coming to them on a regular basis reminds them that they do business with you and if you have a retail store or if wh whatever method you do business with them it's gonna remind them to pick up the phone and call you or come to your store uh, or whatever um, it has great pass along value so something that might you might be valuable to read within your newsletter can be handed off to another person who might be uh, a, a valuable prospect to you okay um, so it's a, important to have great value in there I mean it's a relationship builder and there's a lot of elements to it but have something of enormous value in there that you can uh, pass along also if you're recognizing the reader right and you basically say hey look I'm famous they recognize me in my newsletter well then the next person gets to look through it and says hmm I'm gonna try these people out too um, it has a longer shelf life than other media um, again because if you recognize people in there they don't want to throw it out they want to keep it uh, if there's something tremendously valuable in there like a checklist um, helpful information tips unrelated to your business like uh, uh, 10 best ways to travel light on your next business trip stuff like that okay it can be totally unrelated to your business um, but it's valuable to them so they're gonna keep it around longer it helps you build your brand okay when you're in front of your prospects customers etc etc um, they're reminded of you and your brand whether your brand is you personally your name or if it's your company name or if it's like uh, you know a company name like for instance I am Craig Valine no BS Craig the former struggling consultant different brands right but I also uh, represent GKIC on some level so GKIC is in front of them on a regular basis uh, all because of my continued communication via this newsletter with my herd um, your competitors will most likely not be publishing one okay so this gives you a huge competitive advantage because they're doing what we call one-shot marketing okay they're doing uh, or what I like to call is uh, one-night stand marketing <laughs> okay you know they just shoot it out for sales right they want to 
forgive again forgive the the pun but or the the way I'm using this but they want to get some they want to get you know if you're relating it to a relationship one night stand marketing they want to get some and uh, but there's no relationship building there okay so this is where you have a huge advantage over your competitors um, your competitors will I already said that um, reminds the customer to come back okay because the number one reasons customers don't come back is they forget if you don't stay in touch with them on a regular basis well number one they'll just forget that you're there number two um, they're just gonna go to the first person that does connect with them uh, which may be some you know crappy competitor some somebody who doesn't deliver this type of service you provide or the type of relationship that you provide so you gotta stay in touch with them through this newsletter because otherwise they will forget all right, so here's the age-old question: print newsletter versus e-newsletter. Okay, so with an e-newsletter, here are the benefits: it's relatively low cost to produce. Right, uh, you can deliver it as often as you like with simple, short topics. Uh, you can still develop relationships, but it's really not like a printed newsletter can. Um, challenges: email addresses change much more often than snail addresses. Um, and it can be more difficult to update. See, if you change your mailing address, you can submit an address change to the post office and they'll update it for you. You can't really do that uh, over the internet, as far as I know. Um, and to get the email open, you need to utilize the subject line to its fullest to get it open, okay? That's the power of a headline, right? Sometimes the simplest headlines are the best, but it's really got to get them to open it. And then once they open it, to read it. So that's the challenge. Um, with a print newsletter, it's really still the preferable way to consume large amounts of information. Okay, um, th it's better media to develop relationships because they have to actually physically touch it. Um, they have to physically use their eyes and go through it, uh, page through it. Um, you know, if you have an insert, the insert can fall out, so they've got to pick it up or or adjust it. Um, it's very much, it's much more powerful. And quite frankly, you know, think of it this way: if it was your birthday, would you rather get an email acknowledgement saying "Happy Birthday" or would you rather get a birthday card in the mail? Um, I would say that you'd probably like to get a birthday card in the mail because it means more. Okay. Uh, Bill Glazer recommends. Uh, I strongly suggest you use an e-newsletter to supplement your print newsletter. So we're not saying don't use e-newsletters, we're saying use them in conjunction with print newsletter because email today, deliverability stinks, okay, open rate stinks, readability stinks, okay, so you're only, number one, you only get a portion of your emails delivered, you're getting only a portion of that portion to get them to click through, and then you're only getting a portion of that portion of that portion think <laughs> to read it so very important so supplement it because it will get to some people with the e-newsletter e but it won't get to everyone and you can't ignore the other people on your list um, print newsletters should be sent out monthly and the frequency matters a lot you can't do it once a quarter because in between that quarter when you're not talking to them they're forgetting about you and um, you know your competitors may be mailing to them maybe not newsletters but other marketing materials right you gotta be in front of them on a regular basis uh... dan kennedy says every month you're not communicating with your herd you're losing touch with at least ten percent of them that's pretty bad if you only have fifty people on your list you just lost ten ten of them right so you've only got forty if you've got uh... five hundred that means losing a hundred yeah, so please you know be careful or 50, it means you're losing 50, sorry. <laughs> um, e-newsletters should be sent out at least, at least weekly, okay? An e-newsletter can be sent out once a week, but maybe there's other communication that kind of connects with them. Because there's so much volume of information bombarding people these days, you've got to be touching them on a regular basis, otherwise they forget about you, okay? And, uh, you know, they'll just delete it if they don't remember that they had subscribed to you in the first place. Okay, so I communicate a couple times a week, and uh, sometimes it's pure information driven about a product, a service, or a meeting coming up. The other times it's like, hey, how you doing? Here's a valuable insight. Uh, here's a valuable article that I'm sending you, and I want you to benefit. And that is kind of like my e-newsletter. It's like, you know, I write a few bullets about, hey, what? Just a couple quick things, and then I've got this valuable article down below for you. And, um, uh, you know you want to touch them two or three times before you actually try to sell them something 
okay so uh, anyway at the very 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 least send out your emails weekly uh, for print newsletters they should be sent out no more than no less than monthly um, you need to first decide what you want to accomplish when you are creating your newsletter okay what's the goal of it I would say that first and foremost it should be just to create a sense of community a sense of relationship okay you want to acknowledge people make them feel special where they don't get that anywhere else okay it should not be and I repeat it should not be all about your industry in your business it should be about the customers primarily okay engagement uh, recognition acknowledgement okay um, your masthead and your tagline should have some uniform identity it should look the same each month they get it um, their opening article your opening articles should be personal and conversational talk about your life talk about your experience over the last time before since the last time you spoke with them okay um, I usually tap into something that I just talked about or I'll tie into what I did with my son mini I uh, use call him mini me <laughs> that's his little character name um, but I go into that and it connects people okay it shows that I'm real and I'm not just trying to sell them things um, have a table of contents so they can have a quick reference if they want to jump around um, you want to have relevant semi relevant and non relevant information in your newsletter uh, not just the relevant business industry stuff um, place an insert in the newsletter to make an offer and either don't sell anything in the newsletter or be very selective about what you offer and you might just make it for uh, you can version your newsletter meaning you can have an insert in there for customers and an insert in there for prospects um, you know you requires a little more work but it's but I would say that it's uh, important to do have your message match the market you're communicating with um, remember the main purpose of a newsletter is to build a relationship with your customers and retain them for life consumption is critical so you want to have about no less no more I should say than 40 percent relevant content that is tips information services blah 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 about your business um, semi relevant content you want to welcome new customers uh, make a spotlight of one of your customers uh, employee spotlights if you have employees that you know part of that is making them feel important too so they know why they're working for you uh, anniversaries uh, you know hey you know it's uh, Joe Smith just became our one-year anniversary of doing business with us hey thank you Joe and for being a, member, a customer for a year we're gonna send you a free gift uh, Q&A ask blank ask you you know ask Craig uh, questions marketing questions you know for me uh, testimonials uh, photo photos that demonstrate consumption so like for instance uh, I run the local chapter of Glazer Kennedy if I have photos of people enjoying the meeting active in the meeting that shows that's better than a testimonial almost because it shows people actively engaged in what I do and what I teach if I were meeting with a consultant having a picture with me in a meeting with a consultant might be really good if you have a product or service people using your product or service very powerful um, tell them what they missed show what they missed I do that in my headline in my newsletter front here's what you missed if you weren't at our last meeting uh, demonstration of referrals uh, you know show a picture of someone bringing in a guest hey this is so-and-so you know <laughs> show a picture of them introducing uh, someone to you or show a picture of the referral um, and show what else you do if you can okay um, non-relevant content tri trivia jokes crossword puzzles fun stuff cartoons quotes calendar items photos photos with celebrities right if you go to any Glazer Kennedy event you can always get a uh, picture with a celebrity uh, diamond members do at least I just got my picture taken with Larry Winget uh, you broke because you want to be <laughs> um, J uh, John Rich who was the uh, winner of the last celebrity apprentice he's also a country rocker very awesome dude <laughs> I got a great picture with him um, charity tie-ins if you can you know if you say hey we just had a contest and we, we just raised enough money or written, raised enough food and we delivered it to this uh, charity or whatever um, that's take pictures of those that's big um, contests seasonal themes 
Um, Semi-relevant and non-relevant content should be no less than 60% of the entire newsletter. And you got to create your newsletter with deliberate purpose, okay? Uh, and I'm going to show you a couple examples of things that are done in newsletters, uh, a few of my friends' newsletters, that they do these things very well. Um, sneaky little tricks to increase the effectiveness of your newsletters. Personalization, if you can add personalization to your uh, to your newsletter as powerful, they think it's just for them. Uh, dual readership path, use, make sure you use uh, um, uh, headlines, uh, subheadlines, uh, bolds, arrows, uh, copy cosmetics like copy doodles. Um, very powerful. Okay. Um, different newsletters for different kinds of customers. Uh, one of our members, Honorary Life Chapter member, Dr. Brian Berg, he has a newsletter that goes to, cus to patients and uh, future patients and past patients, and then he has one that goes to his referral partners, okay? And the elements of his newsletter are the same. So, you know, he doesn't, like, thank you for your, thank you for, to our patients for the past referrals. He says, thank you for the doctors for their trust in us and that sort of thing. Um, I don't have an example of that in this presentation, but uh, if you contacted Dr. Berg, uh, I'm sure he would give you one to show you how he uses it. I'm um, having teaser copy on the outside of the newsletter is powerful. Um, what else? Color makes a difference. I don't print in color, but I use different color paper to give the illusion of color. But uh, some of the examples I'll show you are in color and they look great. Uh, print up extra copies to put in your business for people to read and take. Um, when you go to networking events or you're out in public or whatever, have copies with you to give away. Print up and copy and frame it for people you feature to hang up in their offices. So if you feature a customer of the month or a client of the month or whatever, make it a big deal. Frame it for them and give it to them. It'll, it'll really mean a lot to them. So here's um, a couple examples of uh, some newsletters, and I'll show you the elements. Okay, So here, some non-relevant information. Okay, So you have quotes. Uh, for people to read. Um, there's a table of contents here on where to find certain things within the newsletter. Again, non-relevant information, keys to uh, success, 11 habits that will allow you to live to 100. Okay, uh, Here's the title of his thing, Braces by Berg on the front, and he has little video, uh, little um, images, hugs, because this one was sent around February, around, um, uh, excuse me, around Valentine's Day. Okay. Uh, here's another one by uh, our one of our mastermind members, Heather Morrow. She's an artist, so she has a masthead on top. That masthead is the same every time she sends it out, and uh, so when people get it, they know it's it's hers, right? Um, here's one from my friend Jerry Ojinski. He's a malpractice attorney in uh, Manhattan. Uh, his is in full color. Um, again, he has a little not where the pages are, but here's what's in the issue, right? Uh, his masthead is the same, uh, New York Injury Times. Um, he has pictures here, and these are the personal elements of of his um, uh, his newsletter. Okay, so these pictures will relate to stories and things that he did with his family uh, inside the newsletter. So those are powerful. Um, here's Dr. Berg's uh, newsletter again. I want to show you a few things right here. Here with heartfelt thanks for your referrals. He's recognized everybody who sent in a referral. Okay. Um, he's welcomed new patients. So he's recognizing all the new patients that came in. Um, congrats to the people who won the quiz he had on last month's quiz. Um, and again, uh, congrats to the billion dollar smiles. These are the people who just got their braces up so he's recognizing them that's a big deal people look for their name on these things and it again it's an engagement and a consumption device uh, this is from uh, someone I know in the Glazer County world her name is Michelle PW she's a copywriter and this is an example of a postcard newsletter okay and uh, she sends out you know quick tip and it's sent out every month and on the other side are it expands on the tips but uh, you know, just a reminder a thing to stay in touch okay one of the neat things is she has her dog writing the little copy here and uh, I think that's kind of cute so it's what we do is we want to inject personality and in copy when we write these newsletters okay because we want to share a little bit about ourselves people buy us um, more so over time than they buy a product or service okay 
Um, and quite frankly, they may buy need a product or service because uh, to solve a problem that they have, but ultimately they're going to buy because they like us and trust us, and they'll stay with us over time because of that trust uh, and likability factor. Okay, so this in this case, she's using her dog as a connection device. Okay, and uh, I'll show you an example of some other ones as well. Uh, right here, my friend uh, Steve Clark, who is an, also an independent business advisor in the Florida area. Um, as you'll see here, he lists his um, testimonials, raving fans. Okay, uses that in his newsletter, and here is his character, his dog uh, Jake. Okay, so it seems like Jake is writing the article, although we know he can't because he just doesn't write well with his paws. But anyway, it's something that creates interest, and you know who's drawn to this? Animal lovers. Okay, so he has that connection when people have dogs or people have animals. Okay, or people want animals or dogs in their lives. Okay, it's very very powerful, and it's uh, you know in the Glazer Kennedy world we have um, marketing using celebrities, using holidays, using children, using pets, because it creates interest. It creates it creates consumption. Okay, and that's what we want. Uh, and again, you can see it's signed by your friend Jake the dog. Paw prints down there as well. Uh, here's an example of my newsletter. As you can see, it's in pink. I used a pink paper, and uh, it was for my February newsletter, so it was tying into um, uh, Valentine's Day. I could have had more hearts on there, but so here uh, again, I have uh, non-relevant information, quotes to live by. Up here, I have my masthead. Uh, Bill Glazer used my masthead as an example in his newsletter presentation last year at the Super Conference. Um, so it's consistent when they get it they know what it is and it's good um, here's what you missed okay you want to tease people about hey you're missing out because you're not coming to our meetings if you weren't at our meeting here's what you missed and in copy doodles okay copy doodles are copy cosmetics I use them also up at the top where I love the results I get with Glazer Kennedy style marketing with the underline um, I'm mostly using it with keep reading okay it gets them to turn the page uh, here's uh, an insert side page the same newsletter some one thing you want to tell people what you're up to there because let them live vicariously through you in this case it was uh, build a better me project with my friend Scott Evans coaching call with Jim Palmer uh, speaking engagement private coaching with uh, with several uh, clients um, so on and so forth so it creates interest and people go oh what so what are you doing with these clients it creates interest people want to know more about it uh, here again like the the last two used dogs as their creative character their attractive character if you will creating that personality and copy I use my son mini me okay now I don't call him mini me <laughs> he knows I call him that in in this stuff but he's a character that I've created to create interest okay so everywhere I go people say how's mini me doing you know, it's just it's a conversation starter, okay? And they're fascinated by it. So I created a little column as if it was being written by him, okay? And down here, whoop, let me go back. Down here, it's signed by him by Mini Me, okay? Um, so it's just another thing, engagement device to create interest. And again, I'm not selling products and services here. I'm selling me engagement, okay? They want to be they want to be connected to me and Mini Me. All right, so that's it for this presentation. So if you want to learn how to write more conversationally to connect more with your uh, herd, I suggest you purchased uh, through dankennedy.com slash store how to create personality and copy. Every once in a while they have a sale on it. When it is on sale, grab it like there's no tomorrow uh, because it's a powerful, powerful program. It's just an hour and a half, 90-minute program uh, where Dan talks uh, to a live audience about the power of story the power of a character the power of connection okay uh, I listen to it at least once a month it's very powerful um, and uh, I get something out of it every time I listen um, to create you know those copy cosmetics I suggest you use copy doodles I have a link to go directly there craigsdoodles.com um, craigsdoodles.com sorry about that um, Mike Capuzzi is a friend of mine he was also an independent business advisor in the Philadelphia area he's created these little copy doodle things uh, handwritten things un handwritten underlines because it grabs attention okay it creates um, an attention device uh, to get people to notice things within your copy because you know people skim a lot you want people drawn to things okay and again if you don't want to do your own newsletter or if you need a little help with it um, you know my friend Heather Morrow she's a peak performance mastermind member she uses um, uh, 
this source, Jim Palmer, the newsletter guru. He was also my former business coach, a phenomenal guy, very intelligent. But he has a service called um, No Hassle Newsletters, and they have three different levels where number one you can just get the information to you know stuff to plug into your newsletter it's like like the non-relevant information or semi-relevant um, they have templates uh, they have a whole done for you system where they'll do it all you just supply um, you know that conversational element to it uh, so different things uh, different services for different people different price points either way it's totally uh, worth it the investment is worth it several of our members in our local chapter including mastermind members and dr brian berg uh, uses the service as well uh, i recommend it highly so you can go to www.craigsnewslettersecrets.com and uh, just click on element any element and i recommend jim Jim's one heck of a guy down to earth. This program is excellent. And like I said, several of my members are using it and have been using it for a long time. Uh, so I recommend it. So this is it. Uh, how to build an iron fence around your herd. Use a customer newsletter and, uh, and you know, use some of the examples that I showed you here. Watch this video again if you need to to get the. Um, you know all the elements down that you want right but if you don't want to have to guess work it if you don't want to have to do all this work every month farm it out to Jim Palmer the newsletter guru and just go to that site right there craigsnewslettersecrets.com and he'll take great care of you and if he knows you came through my link he knows you're one of my members or my guests or my friends he'll take great care of you so that's all for today my name is Craig Valine your independent business advisor for Glazer Kennedy uh, get a newsletter if you can want to keep an iron fence around your herd and not let them go anywhere else well this is the tool to use alright that's it for now have a wonderful day bye now